I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of fine silver granulation. We're going to use a Smith torch and one of those cute little beehive kilns. So we're getting ready to do a little bit of granulation in fine silver. Lovely example that Jen's done. So the bezel is already fused to the back sheet in place. So then she laid out her wires and her granules very lovingly and carefully. We glued and it's just sitting there drying. Um, and I was explaining before, whenever you're gonna set up anything with granules, always do it in a little bowl or something so that those little shits don't roll off and onto the floor and then you don't know if they're granules or if they're pieces of solder or whatever. I don't mean to call them bad names, but that's what they do because they're very naughty. Now, even though this is glued and it's dried, you never assume. You're gonna pick it up, holding it completely level, like up, and then it's gonna go in the kiln. I'm gonna set it down and let go. You can't do it like a pizza, you know what I mean? You can't like take it and kind of like, you know what I mean, shove it in there because things can come off, okay? And another thing is this. If you take your eyes off of this once, your wrist will go whoop. I have seen it a million times. I don't know what that is about humanity, but you cannot take your eyes off of it. I don't care if the phone rings, the apocalypse comes, the second apocalypse, yeah. apocalypse 2.0, <laughs> whatever. You keep your eyes on it until it is sitting in there, okay? And that is how Voila. you do it. <laughs> let the glue burn off. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start heating it up. I'm going to use the lid to cast a shadow to um, make it a little darker because it helps you see. But, you know, the whole key to granulation or wire work, whatever, when you're fusing it down is most people are like, okay, I need to get those granules like fused to the back sheet. So they're putting the torch on the granules and that overheats them. Then they melt to each other instead of the back sheet. What you're doing instead is you're getting the whole piece hot and then you get the back sheet to melt a little bit and flow underneath the granules. So I'm going to, like if this is my piece, this is gonna be my torch straight up and down and I'm gonna go around nice and tight and build up the heat and build up the heat till I just see a little bit of shine at the edges. And then you use your flame like a paintbrush and you push that molten metal underneath all your wire work and all your granules. And that's how you get it to stay down and to fuse to the back sheet. So you're not really trying to fuse the granules to the back sheet you're trying to fuse the back sheet to the granules, if you know what I mean, okay? We're gonna use the zero tip. Okay, you want a nice sharp flame. I'm gonna use the lid to cast a shadow. Flame is gonna be straight up and down. There's a light coat of ochre on the back of the back sheet to keep it from sticking to the kiln because once it gets hot and liquidy, it will definitely stick to the kiln if you don't do that. So you see how like I'm right on there, you know what I mean? Right at the edge and right on it and I'm building up the heat. And what you will see relatively soon is you're gonna to start to see a little shine at the edge where it starts to get melty a little. You see that? You see like that, that kind of stuff right there? That's what we're looking for. Because once I have that, I can take it and I can push it under the granules. You see what I mean? It's just like wet paint. That looks liquid. So I'm not really paying attention to the granules or the wire work. You mm. see what I mean? And you see how I can just push that underneath there? And this is like to the tune of a waltz. You can do one, two, three, and then you gotta get the fuck out. Because when it's at that liquid state, you know, like that liquid like that, if you hold it at that liquid state for more than about a count of three, it starts to just form a granule. So if you notice, I went in here, I heated, you know, and I pressed it under, but I never kept it liquid for like one, two, three, you see what I mean? And you can do it multiple times. I mean, I think this is probably done, but you see what I mean? Like you can go in, you can do it multiple times as long as you don't keep it liquid for longer than that count. It's sometimes you can push it maybe to four, 
you know what I mean? Like if you're counting a little faster, like one, two, three, four. But past that, it will start to just form a triangle, <coughs> which sucks. Okay, wow. so we're gonna take it out. We'll let it cool. And then usually what I do is like, I hold it up to the magnifier. We're gonna look from the side. We're gonna look for, we want all those little necks. You know, we want everything attached. So if anything wasn't attached, we would put it back in and do a little bit more. But basically that's what you do. You get it hot, you get the back sheet to flow and you push it underneath your elements. And that's how you get it to work beautifully. If you focus too much on the small elements, they just get too hot, they melt to each other, and then you have and is it the same with gold? You still also use it's the kiln? a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We do use the kiln. It's mm -hmm. a little more subtle in gold, mm -hmm. um, but it's very similar in the sense that you get the whole piece really good and hot and get that all hot, and then, the, then you start to see those little attachments start to form. But it doesn't get as liquidy as fine silver does. Mm -hmm. The truth is fine silver is the hardest thing to fuse. <clears throat> That's why it's a great metal to learn in, mm -hmm. because the amount of finesse that you learn using fine silver mm -hmm. is beyond anything else. Mm -hmm. it, then you do gold, and you're like, oh, this is not so bad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I thought we were just prepping with silver because it's so much cheaper. <laughs> also that, but honestly, if you can learn to control that, right. The world's your oyster. Do you know what I mean? Because the finesse you learn, you can get it to do anything you want. Okay? So let it cool. I mean, it looks very good to me, but then we would look at all very carefully and make sure that everything is down. 